and can be translated, and the blocks are free to rotate uh, around the, the uh, axis of the, of the IM rod. The, uh, the balancing tools, very similar to the LCS, uh, are, I believe, uh, a little simpler to use. Uh, they're done with the, after the femoral resection, which provides some stability of the block, and the femoral distractor easily fits into the slot on the back of the balance block, and it allows you to translate the balance block uh, up and down on the IM rod to set the flexion space based upon um, a balanced resection technique. So the rotation and the translation can be established using this balanced technique with a, a femoral positioner to help establish that space. The spacer blocks are used in extension to establish the size of the extension space at, what, at whichever millimeter insert uh, would be chosen to help with uh, to, to achieve the stability required and the femoral positioner uh, and their size specific as well based upon the, uh, the size of the, uh, the extension space that was previously established. So this another nice feature of the, um, of the high performance instruments is the sizing guide for the femur, the, femoral, the fixed femoral sizer is very simple to use, low profile for small incision and, uh, and is, uh, is uh, much, uh, much simpler and much uh, cleaner than the older instruments. So the first step with the balance technique uh, can be either a tibial resection or a distal femoral resection. And one key point with the balance technique is that the depth, the drill has a depth stop and then a larger diameter for, um, for the um, measured resection technique. You don't, because of the IM rod that goes into the canal with the balance technique, you, you only want to drill to the, to the inner, the smaller diameter of the drill. You don't want to go beyond to the larger uh, section. Otherwise, the block will, uh, the uh, rod will toggle in the hole. The um, various valgus angles set, uh, as uh, as we previously stated, on the distal part of the guide, and then my depth of re depth of resection is set on the superior part of the guide, and that's in one millimeter increments by click. So we now uh, we have a two set two types of pins that we can use for fixation, and on the guide on the blocks where I like to potentially move the block, I use uh, just a threaded uh, uh, just a drill bit. And then very simple extraction of the block. There's also a cross pin that can be used, if necessary, to help fix the block to the bone. As you can see, the block is low profile. The capture for the blade is uh, beveled and allows for divergence of the blade to complete the cut. We can choose to either cut on in the slot or on the top of the block, or we, and we can choose to either measure off the high or the low side. On this particular case, I'm going to measure off the low side because she has a fairly large defect. So we can show, we can see here that this uh, depth this uh, depth gauge moves up and down based upon uh, two millimeter increments from zero up to twelve, and it also can be used on the non-slotted side or the slotted side based upon your preference of resection. And so my, my first pin will be a central pin that's in the, in, this, in the central large slot. This slot allows the block to move up and down uh, before we do our final pinning. But this just stabilizes the cutting block on the top of the tibia. So this tower allows me to apply uh, a transverse rod through the hole. And now I have a long line of sight that I can uh, use to estimate uh, a 90 degree orientation to the tibial crest or somewhere within the bimalleolar axis, whichever you choose. I'm fairly happy with the, uh, with the orientation in the uh, coronal plane. We'll look at sagittal plane alignment as well. And we'll go from the middle of the plateau to the medial malleolus. And my guide should be uh, for a posterior stabilized knee uh, about zero degrees, uh, zero to three degrees. And then once we're satisfied with the block, depth of resection, rotation, coronal plane, and sagittal plane alignment, we pin the block in place. P, again, we need a 10 millimeter insert, so our resection is about two millimeters larger than, uh, than we might use with a fixed bearing knee. Again, I chose to cut off the top of the block with the depth gauge, so I'm gonna use the top surface for my resection. I have a stylus that goes on the front of the block. that locks in place. This spiral then is, is essentially an anterior referencing system that allows you to translate down uh, from the anterior, cut, anterior cortex of the femur and provides you with a starting point for balancing. So the block is translated posteriorly based upon that and then I lock it in place. 
it's free to rotate, the rod is free to rotate, the block is translated and locked from up to down. So that gives me a starting point for my balanced resection. We have a balanced resection femoral positioner that uh, translates the, the femoral block parallel to the tibial cut and puts tension on based upon the size of the gap. We know we have a 10 millimeter gap in extension for a, a 10 millimeter insert, so we would choose a 10 millimeter tibial shim. So that 10 shim is applied to the back of the block. We then have your assistant lift the leg and we translate the block, the, the shim into the, uh, into the knee inflection. The block is then, then translated into place and we can assess the stability of the flexion space. So now the, what's happened is what, what, what this uh, specific femoral positioner is doing is it's applying tension to the collateral ligaments and, it's, and, the, and the rod and the block are free to rotate in the canal. So the rotation of the femoral cuts is going to be parallel to the tibial resection and the translation of the block is going to be based upon the size of the shims which for this specific patient is a 10 millimeter insert because we've already established that in extension. And we can take a cob elevator and take a feel of my tension of the collaterals on each side. You can also reach the end of the hip and range the knee to assess. Very similar to an LCS technique. So I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with the translation of the block. If this was too tight, I would loosen the knob and translate the block anterior. If it was too loose, I'd loosen the knob, translate it posteriorly, lock it into place, and then put the positioner back in. But in this specific case, I think the tension on the collaterals and the location of the block are, are appropriate. So at this point, we're satisfied with the, uh, with the position. Again, my collateral ligaments have set the set the rotation and the translation, and so we'll pin this block in place. This fixes the rotation. I can now take the tensioner out. Let's pull the tibial pins out since I know I've got enough of a resection for a 10 insert. And I'll finish my, my AP cuts on the femur. Now this is essentially the key of the procedure is, um, is establishing rotation and translation of this block. Once this is done, I think you've, you've essentially balanced the knee. So we've balanced the extension space, established at least a 10 millimeter insert, established the size of the extension gap, and now match the flexion gap to it in rotation and translation. Cutting softly. Now, if you, uh, if you anticipate a potential notch, then the decision would be to upsize the block.